this is Alison Larkin. I am the audiobook narrator of the complete novels of Jane Austen and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here to introduce a clip uh, from a performance I gave at Shorten House in June 2019 uh, in which I talked about my novel The English American which is an autobiographical novel about an adopted English woman who finds her birth parents in the United States. It miraculously became a bestseller and the narration of the audiobook led to my becoming an audiobook narrator as well as a writer. Um, one of my most exciting projects was uh, narrating the novels of Arthur Ransom and uh, also the complete novels of Jane Austen, but more recently Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And um, so one of the quick things I just wanted to say is I was very surprised to learn that apparently Charlotte Bronte did not much like Pride and Prejudice. She also, by the way, had a Northern Irish accent. And if she were here, she might be saying, I don't quite understand why all you Jane Austen fans are not huge Charlotte Bronte fans. And I'd like to recommend my books in which something actually happens. And in return, Jane might say, Charlotte, it's perfectly all right for you to uh, continue to talk in a somewhat critical way uh, of my work, but it cannot be disputed that uh, my novels have sold over 200 million copies in the last, oh, how long is it? I think you know exactly how long it is, and I'm sure that if you were less pedantic and less detail-oriented, you might be able to write a book that ha actually has some excitement in it. Well, at least my books don't depend on the device of burning buildings and mad women throwing themselves off ramparts for uh, excitement and electricity. Ladies, could you just please calm down for a second? What you're about to see is uh, an excerpt from my... From, uh, my performance at Chawton House last year and um, also just before that um, there was a little bit of filming that went on uh, just after I arrived from an all night flight uh, for Regency Week. I hope it will entertain you or at least divert you for a little while and I'll look forward to chatting with you uh, later soon and um, sorry about the camera work. <laughs> uh, I'm in isolation in the United States and um, I know a lot of you are in lockdown uh, all over the world and I send you all lots of love and um, perhaps you'll escape listening to a classic audiobook. Um, but either way, take care and uh, look forward to seeing many of you in person, hopefully soon. Okay, bye. Yeah, Alison? It's the Regency picnic, it's nine o'clock, come on. I know you're jet lagged, but you're not even dressed. Right. Alison? Yes, yes, this is a door that looks look, look, look like a girl. Fantastic. All right, I'm just not sure what to do with this thing. Oh, let me help. Let me help. Come on. Oh, thank you. Chuck your hair behind you. Like this. Okay. Right, okay. And that goes in there. Can you hang on to it? I, I have your ears. I can't believe they did this. Lovely. Yeah. Because mustn't spill anything on it. Thanks, June. I, I have a scullery maid to sort it. <laughs> scullery maid to sort it. All right. You are brilliant. Charming. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, it's my Regency watch. Of course it yes. is. Of course it is. Are we ready? Okay. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. So, Alex Morgan, I understand you've listened to the audiobook yes. of Jane and Me. Yes, because I'm partially sighted and deaf. It's, it's been amazing, you know, way for me to be able to read the books. And I've got all your other ones as well that you've done with Jane Austen as well. You know, because I'm such a super fan. I've come all the way from Newport today. Oh, how absolutely wonderful to yeah. me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's always been my dream because I've sort of, you know, struggled with things. And to do this, you know, is a, a big dream, you know, to be in Jane's footsteps. And it was just so exciting, you know coming from Chorley and coming into autumn and all that and seeing it and everything it was just so amazing I can't 
tell you, I feel as if I've come home. Oh. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, it's true, I was actually adopted as a baby and raised in England, not far from here, actually in Chichester. And 25 years ago, I decided I really wanted to find the mother who'd given me birth. Um, before I met her, I, I thought I was English, but I'm not. <laughs> I am the great, 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 great granddaughter of Governor Spotswood of Virginia. <laughs> so these days, I spend most of my time in my audiobook recording studio, which is great because you don't have to brush your hair, and you can go to work in your pyjamas. But it can be a bit lonely, so I thought, I know, I'm going to go out and meet the people who listen to my audiobook. So hello. <laughs> I was packaged as English, but made in the USA. <laughs> and sometimes I'm a bit confused about how to behave. Um, I live in America now, and <coughs> I was in New York recently, and this chap comes up to me and says, give me all your money. And I said, well, the English part of me said, I haven't got much on me at the moment, but my cash machine's just around. <laughs> So I shot him. <laughs> so after I met my birth mother who was living in Tennessee and my birth father in Washington DC, I moved to New York City and became a stand-up comic because what else do you do? <laughs> um, I had been an actress and a playwright in England, and I didn't know anybody in New York. Um, so I thought, I'll stand up on stage and tell complete strangers what's just happened. And I'd say things like, I think everyone should be adopted, because that way you can meet your birth parents when you're old enough to cope with them. <laughs> <laughs> the key to dealing with the fear of abandonment is to date people you don't like. <laughs> so if they do leave you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> of course, as far as the whole adoption agency thing is concerned, it's a little bit of a lottery because you never know who you're going to get as parents or what will happen as a result of it. I got lucky. And again, if I'd been adopted by Mia Farrow today, I could be married to Woody Allen. <laughs> 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 I'd say things like, my birth father is a right-wing conservative who supports the Christian coalition. In fact, I am the product of one of his Christian coalitions. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always thought of infidelity as wrong because it means betrayal. But if my birth father hadn't cheated on his wife, I wouldn't exist. So if there are any couples here this morning <laughs> having a secret extramarital affair, I encourage you to breed. <laughs> so what happened next was interesting because you know, people sort of suddenly, they thought I was joking at first about being adopted, and then they found out I wasn't, and they say, well, what was it like meeting your real parents? And to me, my real parents are parents who had raised me, and I loved them very much, but I had needed to find my American parents, so I thought, I know. I'll combine stand-up comedy and theatre, and I'll write a one-woman show. And I will express this in a way that won't make me sound like a lunatic through comedy. So I played myself, my English mother, who in real life sounds exactly like me, but I made her sound like the Queen to differentiate. <laughs> <laughs> and my American birth mother, who was her diametrical <laughs> <laughs> in every single way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Los 
Highlanders, and then the comedy, uh, London Comedy Festival, the Soho Theatre in London. And then, it was amazing, Jim Henson Productions. Do you know of Jim Henson? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they she put me on an airplane and flew me to Hollywood to star in a sitcom. Um, and I got to meet the Muppets. <laughs> and um, by the way, Elmo is a puppet. <laughs> um, <laughs> and at first I liked Los Angeles because it's a really optimistic place. I mean, where else would someone pay two million dollars for a glass house on a cliff two weeks after an earthquake? <laughs> but then I had children and I would carry them around, and I'd look up at these enormous signs with these women in these breasts, and this, and everybody <laughs> really cared about what you looked like and how thin you were, and I thought, I can't raise them here. So we made a mistake, and we moved to New Jersey. <laughs> and the problem uh, with having children, as many of you know, is that you become quite fond of them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to grow my own children. <laughs> and unlike the mother who gave me birth, I got to keep them. <laughs> so they were also uh, the first genetic relatives I had ever lived with. And I found them absolutely fascinating. And I thought, I don't want to spend my evenings doing stand-up comedy. I want to spend time with them while they still want to spend time with me doing important things like scraping the banana off the VCR. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought, uh, well, at the time, there was this, I don't know, there's lots of popular fiction. I mean, you are still enthusiasts. But, <laughs> but there's a lot about um, adopted people who are either eternally damaged victims or serial killers. And they're in <laughs> all the Christian novels. And I was getting increasingly irritated by the fact that adopted people were portrayed in this way. And somebody said, why don't you write a book? And I thought, well, that's a good idea, because if I do that, I can spend time with my children and write while they're sleeping. <laughs> and also, maybe if I can write the kind of book that I like to read, which has to have short chapters, because I have no attention span, <laughs> and um, then, then maybe people on a beach or a plane would understand why someone from a really, really happy adopted family might need to find the truth about the people she came from. Um, and then, maybe, if you know, people came up to me and said, well, what was it really like, meeting your birth parents? You know, instead of having to go through the whole story, I could say, oh, it would take a book to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
if you sound like Prince Philip.